For more on the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the global economy, I want to bring in William Lee. He's chief economist at the Milken Institute. William, thank you for joining us. I want to pick up right there from that uh, soundbite. At the G20 emergency call on Monday, South African Economy Minister uh, Dondo uh, Mohajane uh, made a plea for greater support for low-income tr- countries. I'm thinking about 2008. We saw a recovery there. Then I also remember at the end of 2010 uh, in North Africa, the self-immolation by Mohammed Bouazizi, uh, Bouazizi, which started, many say, what became the Arab Spring. We saw a ripple effect in some of these low-income countries that rely on remittances from the developed world. Do you think this will be over for the whole world economically by 2021? What about the low-income countries? How are they preparing for this? The key difference between 2008 and what we have today is that 2008 was a financial crisis. This, that, that really hit certain pockets of the advanced economies, the U.S. real estate market in particular. This is a health crisis that's affecting every country in the world. Every country has infections or will have infections given the global contagion. And so addressing the health problem is the key to everyone's problem, uh, solution, including the low-income countries. Remittances will start flowing again once their relatives who are living in the advanced economies start to work, and the key is to get people back to work. The South African economy minister wanted to make sure that more is being done to protect low-income countries to support them. Is that being done on a global scale? WHO has made a lot of efforts to make sure expertise goes to the available, uh, to the low-income countries. But one of the things that we have to remember is that the key is to stop contagion from spreading and, and what is already there to build up the infrastructures in a way that would allow the low-income countries to at least address some of the health crises. We know that their health systems and infrastructure is wholly inadequate and the human tragedy would be very, very large compared to other countries. But one of the things we need to watch out for is that in many of these low-income countries, a lot of the contagion comes from imported sources. And so restricting travel from the advanced economies will also help the low-income countries limit the amount of contagion that comes into the country. We saw an enormous move on Monday morning by the U.S. Federal Reserve to buy as much government-backed debt as needed. I want to hear your thoughts on that. The role of the Federal Reserve is to make sure that the financial markets are successful in directing credit and, and, and financing to companies and people who need it. And, and, and what the Federal Reserve is trying to do is to make sure that there are adequate markets out there that are fully functioning. Since the days of Dodd-Frank with the last financial crisis, where there's been a lot of regulation put in place, the number of market makers has diminished tremendously. Market making is the lifeblood of financial markets. And so what the Federal Reserve is doing, having to do now, is to come in there and cover a lot of financial markets with their own market maker, with their own liquidity, so that we can ensure that companies and individuals who need money will get money and and get it rapidly. There's a debate happening uh, a few blocks away on Capitol Hill over this $2 trillion uh, stimulus. That's still going on. Some saying uh, this is an effort to bail out Wall Street Others are saying the government should be more concerned about Main Street and the workers there. Your thoughts? It's a travesty that Congress cannot cut checks to people who need it. People who are thrown out of jobs because the health policies that have been put in place to contain the virus has thrown a lot of people out of work, has thrown companies into a tizzy because of their insufficient cash flow, and a lot of companies, small and medium-sized businesses, family-owned businesses are facing bankruptcy. That state of the world is something that the Congress could address immediately by cutting some checks and saying, here's the aid that you need to tide you over until the virus situation is under control. And and that is yet to come. And I think that is really the tragedy that is facing us right now. One of the things that I thought was interesting, uh, obviously, as central banks around the world are slashing rates, China is keeping its lending rate stable. Why is that? You know, China has a, is at a very advanced state of recovery from the virus. And China right now is having to worry about the problems that it was worried about before, which is the excessive debt levels and, 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 and other things. They don't want their economy to come out of this, this downturn with huge amount of debt burdens. And so encouraging borrowing is something they don't want to do. I think one thing they have tried to do is something what every other country has tried to do, which is fiscal policy, to make sure that people have enough money to spend, to make sure that their bills are delayed enough so that their business can get back on track before they have to pay the bills. That kind of loan forbearance and regulatory tax forbearance is key to letting economies recover in a healthy way. China is at, at that advanced stage. I wish the U.S. were able to get its act together so that it could also 
follow the time path of China where once the recovery starts to take hold, they have the financing and the companies and workers are in a state where they can start to resume normal life again. All right, William Lee, Chief Economist at the Milken Institute, joining us from Los Angeles. Thank you.